let's get right into it on podcast 190. That's right, episode 190. Thank you all for joining us on the Sports Coma today. And we're going to get right into it with this whole Mark Ingram situation reported by NFL Network that uh, the Saints knew about Ingram's suspension before the draft. And they they kept a real tight-lipped approach to it. Of course, they did take uh, the young running back in the sixth round, but eventually we all knew they were going to take a running back at some portion based upon Mark Ingram's contract situation uh, coming into it and the fact that last year was his first full year without being injured, and the Saints probably would need a reliable back behind Ingram and Kamara because so, the, so much of their offense to do with this? <laughs> Well, obviously... When you look at it, let's break into the article and read not. it. Let's, let's check it out. New Orleans Saints are without their top rusher for the first quarter of 2018. Uh, Mark Ingram has been suspended by the league without pay the first four games for violating NFL policy on PEDs, PEDs performance enhanced substance. The league announced Tuesday. Ingram enhancing was, drugs, right? It's PEDs. They said P, performance enhanced <laughs> substances. Uh, okay. Ingram, who led the Saints in rushing last season with 11-24, is eligible to return to the Saints' active roster on Monday, October the 1st, following the team's September 30 matchup against the Giants. Now, the games Ingram will miss, uh, in addition to, the, to that game, will be uh, the Buccaneers game, the Browns game, and a, and a very important Falcon matchup. While depending for game suspension, Ingram is allowed to participate in, in offseason and preseason practices and in games, but of course, when the regular season kicks in, so that's his band. Now, he hasn't been around the team facility during the voluntary offseason conditioning. However, he won't be around for he he won't be around for the voluntary. He hasn't been around the facility for voluntary offseason conditions as well. So Rappaport adds that the suspension has hung over Ingram for several weeks, and the Saints were aware of the situation before the league's annual three days selection process. Now, quote. They did know before the draft rap report said, quote, they never quite can tell if a player is going to win an appeal or not. He's been battling this for a for the last several weeks. He found out today he did not win his appeal, end quote. Uh, NFL reporter rap report pointed out that Ingram is heading into the final year of his contract and desires a new deal, even with the presence of Elvin Kamara's NFL's reigning offensive rookie of the year of the year. Now, of course, the absence of Ingram for the first four games is a blow to the Saints' potent ground game, which finished uh, the 2017th season ranked fifth with 129.4 yards a game. Now, Ingram and Kamara became the first teammate duo in league history to reach 1,500-plus scrimmage yards in a single season, to each of them reach 1,500 apiece scrimmage. Kamara, who will have his first shot to be featured, rushing, produced 728 yards rushing. And eight touchdowns on 120 carries, averaging an eye-popping 6.1 yards per attempt. He added 826 yards receiving and five touchdowns on 81 catches. And, of course, this Impressive. is, quote, they're going to be in, a, in going the direction of Elkham, Elvin Kamara anyway. Clearly going to be the future guy on offense, end quote, Rappaport said. But, obviously, Mark Ingram is a nice one-two punch for Kamara. And now they will not have him for the first four games of the 2018 season. Now, the Saints' lineup of running backs look like this. Of course, we know about the selection of Law Tech running back Boston Scott in the sixth round. And then you have Daniel Lasko, who's coming off that really crucial injury. You have Jonathan Williams, who came, came over during the season from Buffalo as a signee. And Trey Edmonds, who was featured as, who was actually the third back behind those two guys that's on the roster uh, as well. So the question is, that's the article. Going into it, the fact that the Saints did know about Mark Ingram's PED uh, situation. Moving forward, D.C. Now, there are some options the Saints can go with. We heard kind of chatter about, you know, uh, the guy, what's his name, uh, the running back from Dallas who played with the Titans. Like the Marco Murray? Yeah, well, Murray. We heard chatlins about that. We heard chatlins about other things. Could chitlins? It? You said chitlins? Or about? Chatlins and chitlins. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the, so the, ba- the bottom of, line is it's a bunch of <laughs> but, but the bottom line is you know what direction do we go here you know do we stand pat and just work with what we got or do we go out in the fridge and market and see if we can dig up something uh, to kind of compensate until Mark Ingram gets back from that four game uh, band 
I think it, it depends on what the organization sees in Alvin Kamara. If they think he can hold up to the uh, excessive workload for those four games without risking an injury. Um, I think we stand pat and use some of the guys on our rosters to kind of fill in when he needs a breather uh, to be not necessarily a change of pace back, but um, just a guy to give him a break when need be. If they don't feel that Alvin Kamara should take Alvin Kamara should take that type of punishment, and I think we go out and look at a guy like DeMarco Murray, possibly if he's willing to play for not a lot of money, um, or maybe even consider bringing AP back for four games. I AP, don't know. AP is uh, a free agent. That's no doubt about it. And, and for four games, um, you know, that's interesting, you know, to say the least, because, you know, of course they knew about him. But I'll be honest with you, Mark Ingram, this doesn't bode well for the Saints signing. Of course, when they, you know, they usually get this similar to what helped with Elvin, Kam- with not Elvin Kamara, with uh, Kenny oh, Vaccaro. Yeah. You know, when he was doing his thing and then he kind of fell in the doghouse with the Saints when he, uh, suffered his four game suspension at the end of the tail end of the season. Uh, that was uh, what was it last he year? Basically, lost his starting job. Uh, he went from being our starting safety to Von Bell actually starting, and he filled in on that uh, that three safety role. Yeah, yeah, that relegated him to a bench uh, backup guy uh, in the secondary. No doubt about it. Now, Mark Ingram, this is uh, his last year on this on the contract, and now you get this this ban, of course. There's still a third indicator as well. Now, we mentioned free agency getting the back. We also mentioned standing pat. But there's a third uh, option as well is if he appeals this situation, you know, of course they said he appealed it and he failed. Can he double appeal? Can he come back with another appeal uh, and see if he can kind of hold it off, the, you know, like what happened with Jerry Jones and uh, – and and the running back. So you, you can appeal. Desolate. You can appeal your appeal. I don't know if he can appeal his appeal. I don't think he can appeal his appeal. But they're saying that, uh, according to this, he said his he failed his appeal. Look, I see. He found out he did not win his appeal. So no, his the suspension is going to stand. So that we don't. I guess we to, to correct myself. We don't have that third option. So it's only those two options. So there we go. Uh, the Saints. That's uh, amazing. We never heard about this at all, man. man I mean, it went through an appeal process and everything. That's. That's pretty good work by the Saints front office, I have to say. Yeah, they, they can kind of, I guess, uh, some of the administration, the president's administration could take some of uh, the Saints the way they hold secrets. There ain't no leak in the building for that. That was huge. That was major news. And the, the fact the Saints were confident in Mark Ingram beyond that uh, to not let, you know, to still not get a back higher uh, than, you know, what, which is needed. Right. So it, it would have been really or prevalent the for them. Are extremely to, confident in Alvin Kamara. <laughs> maybe overconfident, you know, not saying that it's not warranted to be overconfident in the guy that puts up those kind of numbers, but you know, this is the NFL. When they, when he comes back next year, teams are going to key in on him because he's no longer a team secret. People are going to well, recognize him as something. You. It's going to be a lot more difficult for him to produce those kind of numbers, especially if he's in that and he's a single back missing Mark Ingram for those first four games who can kind of take some of the pressure off of them in that mixture. So it's going to, I mean, it's going to be kind of difficult those first four games, uh, depending on what they do at the running back situation. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to be difficult at all. You know, if you paid attention during the season, after about week nine, teams were keying in on them anyway. Um, That Atlanta game, their whole thing was to put him out, and that was in December. And they realized what he was, and our offense looked totally different with him out on the field. But this year, we've already made additions to not have to rely on him the way that we did last year, as in being vulnerable if he's not able to, you know, be what he was or if he gets hurt. Or if we have problems at running back, period. I think the Saints have set themselves up to be able to play or or be the most balanced team in the NFL. We can go back to that passing set if we need be. All we can run the ball. So I think they're kind of getting back to their old identity and meshing it with the new this year. So I think they'll be fine. Right. Well, that, that's the thing. We're going to go into our break. When we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit more on the other side of the break. We're also talk about the COVID Fleena release and finally other people that were released as well. And we're going to cover that top 100 news about Thomas and Lattimore on the other side of the break. Listen to the Sports Coma. Stick with us. 